Okay, we're going to look at an example here. Uh, so this is intending to sort of give you an idea about how some of these things might um, have some sort of meaning here. So I've got a function that gives temperature at a point measured in meters from an origin, perhaps a heat source or a base point that you're measuring distance from. Um, all right, and so I've got this function that gives a numerical output uh, when the input is a position in space. And I have an object located at some particular point. I want to find a derivative and interpret that. And then we're going to do a couple more things with this function also and some derivatives here. All right, so the notation here, I know it feels unimportant, but the more you can use the correct notation and get used to letting those symbols tell you what to do, the more it's going to benefit you later in this semester. So this is just asking you for a partial derivative of t with respect to z. All right, so I'm just going to find that derivative. I'm just going to differentiate this function with respect to z. Um, all right, so my constant out front, and then I have e to this variable power. So I'll have 20 times e to this variable power. And then times the derivative of what's in that exponent. And since I'm differentiating with respect to z here, uh, the derivative of this z term, notice I have something slightly different going on here in the x and y terms in that exponent than the z term. Uh, the derivative of that z term will just be negative 1. So all of this times negative 1, or we can just put a minus out front here. Okay, so that's del t del z. Um, this means del t del z evaluated at the point 1, 2, 3, and then we want to think about what that answer means. All right, so del t del z evaluated at this particular point. I'm just going to plug these numbers in for my x, y, and z, and then simplify. So I'll have negative 20 e to the, let's see, 1 squared will be 1. So I'll have negative 1 minus 2 squared will be 4. So negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, and then minus 3. So e to the negative 8. OK, so I get a number there. It's a negative number. I could write that as negative 20 over e to the 8th if I want. I can get a decimal approximation, which I did, and that's about 0 0.0067 negative. So approximately equal to that. Um, so I have a negative number, so that tells me something about what's happening here. And then I also have units to think about when I'm interpreting this. Um, all right, so the units would be in terms of whatever these variables represent. So T is measured in degrees Celsius, and Z is measured in meters from the origin. So this would be uh, either exact answer or approximate answer in degrees Celsius per meter. Um, because that's a negative rate of change, it tells us that when the object is at this point, when the object goes in the direction of increasing z, so if we think about ordinary orientation of our axes, that would be up. So what I, it doesn't say here usual orientation, but if we assume usual orientation, so when we're at the point 1, 2, 3, when the object goes in the direction of plus z, so maybe that's up. Then this number gives us that rate of change in temperature when that object moves in that z direction. So the temperature goes down, decreases by this many degrees Celsius per meter. Um, the object, uh, the temperature decreases by approximately 0 0.0067. So decreases, so I don't need to put the negative there, degrees Celsius per meter. Okay, so interpreting that, a negative rate of change means I have a decreasing output for the function here. So any partial derivative that you're looking at there, you're really thinking about is the function output increasing or decreasing, and by how much 
when the object is at whatever the input point is representing and goes in the direction of increasing x, y, or z. Um, so that's what partial derivatives represent. They are an example of directional derivatives. So the other thing that we want to think about here is when the object is at this point, uh, we're just going to kind of build on this example and think about when the object is at that point, we're going to think about the rate of change of temperature when the object moves from that point toward another point. So I want to find the rate of change of t, the output of the function, when the object is at this point and it moves toward another point. And let's see, I wrote down a point here. Let's do 2, 3, 5. Okay, so when we're looking at this, these are both about rates of change of temperature, but this one is about when we just move in the direction of one of our variable axes. Here, the object is at this point, 1, 2, 3, and it's really changing its, its direction in both the x, y, and z directions and not the same amount in each of those directions. So this is a derivative, a rate of change should make you think about derivative, but this is a directional derivative. This first one is also an, a directional derivative, but it's just moving in one specific direction, so I don't need to use a directional derivative formula to calculate that. Okay, so when I do this one, first of all, recognizing it's a directional derivative, and then just doing the appropriate calculations to get that. So for directional derivative, you'll need the gradient vector, We'll want that evaluated at our point. So I'm going to put as a little subscript there, gradient vector for the t function evaluated at the point 1, 2, 3. And then I will need to dot product that with the unit vector that shows the direction of our motion. So there are a few things that we'll need to calculate separately and then do this dot product here. OK, so gradient vector is partial derivative of my temperature function with respect to x and y and z. So del t del x, uh, and since I've already thought through this partial derivative with respect to z, I'm going to kind of leverage the thinking I did there. Uh, so I'm going to have 20 times this times the derivative of this expression that's inside the exponential function with respect to x. So that'll give me an, an extra minus 2x out front. So we'll have minus 40x e to the negative x squared minus y squared minus z. And then when I take the derivative of the temperature function with respect to y, I'll have a similar sort of situation there. Negative 40y e to the negative x squared minus y squared minus z. And then I already have my partial derivative with respect to z that we found over here. So that will be in the third component of this vector. Uh, here's my expression. All right, so that's just my gradient vector in general. I need that gradient vector evaluated at my point. OK, so I'm going to put these numbers in for x, y, and z. And I've already thought through the exponential part when I did this other one. So I'll have negative 40 times x, so that'll be negative 40. And then this exponential function part here will be e to the negative 8. And then when I put in 2 uh, for y here, I'll have negative 80 e to the negative 8. And then we already calculated the third component. That's the same thing we had over here, negative 20 e to the negative 8. OK, so that's my gradient vector evaluated at the point I'm interested in. The other thing I need here is a unit vector that goes from my point that I started at toward the point I'm going to. So we need to remember how to calculate a unit vector. I'm going to go ahead and label these points. I'm going to label this first one point A and this second one point B so that we can think about writing a vector that goes from A toward B. But then remember, I need to make sure I remember that that's a unit vector. All right, so I'm going to do some calculations down here. My vector from A to B. So I'll start at this point and go here. So my x will increase by 1. 
so I'll have one. My y will also increase by one, and my z direction will increase by two. Okay, so that's a vector that goes from A toward B, but it's not a unit vector. Its magnitude is not one. So I need to find its magnitude, divide through by that magnitude to get that unit vector. So my unit vector is going to be AB divided by the magnitude of AB. Okay, notice I'm labeling all of these intermediate steps here. Really what I want to do at the end here is a dot product, which is pretty easy to do. It's easier to do if I grab the right things when I'm ready to go ahead and do that dot product. So be sure that you're labeling things properly. Uh, all right, so the magnitude of AB would be square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, so square root of 6. So I'll just divide this through by square root of 6. 1 over square root of 6, 1 over square root of 6, 2 over square root of 6. When you do directional derivative problems, if you don't get the right answer, that would be the first thing I check is, are you really using a unit vector? All right, we are almost done here. So in order to calculate this dot product, I need to take my gradient, evaluate it at the point, and I need to dot product that with my unit vector here. Uh, so when I do that, this one has some nice simplification here. So gradient t evaluated at 1, 2, 3, dot u. Um, so in the i component, I'll have negative 40 e to the negative 8 times 1 over square root of 6. So I'll make that negative 40 e to the negative 8 over square root of 6. And then when I take the y component, dot this y component, I'll have minus 80 e to the negative 8 divided by square root of 6. And then when I use the z direction here, I'll have minus 40 e to the negative 8 over square root of 6. And then I'll be able to combine those. So I have several terms here that uh, I'll add up. So negative 40, negative 80, and negative 40 will give me negative 160 e to the negative 8 over square root of 6. That's exact answer. You can get a decimal approximation. The key thing to notice there is that that's a negative rate of change. So we know that the temperature is decreasing. And if I want units on that, that would be, squeeze that in up here, degrees Celsius per meter again. That's uh, rate of change of the output of the function, which is temperature with respect to distance. Our distances are all measured in meters here. So again, a negative rate of change. So we've got a decreasing temperature in that direction. Okay, do some practice problems with some of these.